Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I want to talk about internal controllers in FL Studio and just how powerful they can be when you're trying to relate different device parameters to one another. Now what I mean by that at its base is very simple. The basic idea is that you want one parameter to react to changes in another parameter. The way you do this is by using what FL Studio refers to as internal controllers. Much in the same way that a MIDI controller would be an external controller, that is something that you can physically interact with and change parameters within the program, internal controllers in FL Studio are devices within the software that can control other parameters. For today's lesson, we'll be using one of the most helpful internal controllers in FL Studio, the Peak Controller. What I've done here is put together a fairly straightforward four in the floor beat. I made this beat pretty minimal to leave room for some of the effects modulation that we're going to do using the Peak Controller. The way I'm going to apply this concept to the beat that I have here is to modulate some effects parameters, bringing the effects levels in and out in a way that reacts to what the beat itself sounds like. What this will do is add percussive movement to the effects, rather than having the effects on all the time and sounding very static. So let's get to it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you open up the mixer view through this button up here, you can see that the only effect I have going right now is on the master. I have a compressor just to tame some of the peaks in my beat. But beyond the compressor, I haven't messed with any effects yet. So I'm going to set up a simple effects chain here on insert 1. I'll set up a fruity reverb 2, and then I'll have that go into a fruity delay 2. Now I'm going to use these two effects to modify this little hi hat sound right here on channel 2. So I'll send channel 2 to insert 1. Obviously the effects are working, so now it's just a matter of finding some good settings for the effects and then finding a way to modify them. So now that I know the effects are working on the hi-hat sound, it's just a matter of finding some good settings for these two effects here and then making them react to the beat rather than just stay static all the time. So I'll bring this dry volume down a bit, say around here, Bring down the offset a bit. That makes the delayed sounds closer together in the mix. And then I'll bring the time down more. And then I'll also bring the cut knob down a lot by default. But we're going to control this with a peak controller in a minute. As you can see, when I bring that cut knob up and down, it drastically affects the level of the delay. So that'll be a helpful tool to use with internal controllers. Now onto the reverb settings. Now we're going to control this wet parameter again with a peak controller, so I'll bring it all the way down by default for now. And I'll bring the early reflection levels way up, because I'd like the early reflections to be pretty intense. The reason for this is that I'm going to be modifying the wet value, that is the amount of the affected sound that is present, with a peak controller so we can get away with more extreme settings on this reverb if we're not just going to leave it on fully wet all the time. You'll see what I mean in a moment. We'll also be using a peak controller to modify the high cut parameter, that is how much the reverb cuts out the high frequencies on the reverb signal. Listen to what happens when I manipulate that parameter. Predictably it does modify the high frequencies and that's a fun effect to bring in and out in an automated way. So I'll bring this wet back down, and I'll drag our two effects down here because we'll need them in a moment. The first effect I'd like to achieve is to have the entire beat determine when the cut parameter on the delay comes in and out. So this will be our first use of the peak controller. I'll just click on my master here because I want the master output, that is the sound of the entire beat, to rhythmically modulate the cut parameter on the delay, which is in itself modifying just the hi-hat. So I've selected our master channel here in the mixer, I'll click on the arrow here and select Fruity Peak Controller. Here's the interface for the first peak controller. Now the first thing you need to do with any internal controller device like this is actually link it to a parameter so you can hear its effect. I know I'm going to want to modify the cut parameter here in the delay, so I'll right click on cut and I'll come down to link to controller and it'll bring up this menu right here. As you can see I have an internal controller option right here in the middle of this new dialog that's opened. I'll just click on the little arrow, 
and choose Peak Control Master and just Peak. So now the master output will be controlling the cut parameter on the delay. So I'll just hit accept. The dialog goes away. And now before I play the beat back to you, notice that there's a little mute button right here. The mute button makes sure that none of the audio that's going into the peak controller actually comes out. The reason why that's useful in some situations is if you want an audio signal to control a parameter, but you don't actually want to hear the audio signal itself. That's not the case here because of course we do want to hear the master audio output, but in addition we want it to modulate one of the sounds in the beat. So if I click on the mute button right here, we'll be able to hear the beat and it will also modulate the cut parameter on the delay. As you can see the cut knob was moving up and down, rhythmically bringing that delay effect in and out along with changes in the beat.